Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnichi. I'm Cisco CCNA, CCMP and Palo Alto Certified Instructor. In this video we are covering PCN SA210. This is Chapter 2, Initial Device Configuration. And this is seventh video on that chapter, which is 2.7 Lab Initial Configuration. We're going to configure, we're going to create an administrative role. We're going to create a new administrator and apply that administrative role that we have created. We can observe the newly created role permission via the command line interface and web user interface. Create and test the commit lock, configure the DNS server for the firewall, and schedule dynamic updates. The first thing is to log on to the firewall. I already have a firewall running. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to log in, open a Chrome browser, but it could be any browser really, uh, it's going to be a secure connection, so HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash is there already, I have access it. I'm going to log in as administrator, so admin, admin. Okay, now that we have connected to the firewall, so I'm just going to click OK here. And um, first thing was to create an administrative role. To do that, before we create an administrator, we have to create an administrative role, and then we apply that administrative role to the administrator. So to do that, we need to go to devices or device. We have administrator role and administrators. So as we can see, by default, we have just one administrator, and that's given a super user role. Now, to create an administrator, admin role, by default, if you remember, we had a super user, super user read only, system administrator, system administrator read only, virtual system admin, and virtual system admin read only, if your device supports the virtualization. So, but before we create an administrator, we have to create admin role. So this is what the administrator can do. We already have a predefined three roles that are predefined, but we're going to create our own role. So click add here. And for this role, I'm going to say junior admin. Now, here is what the junior admin can do. Anything that you see green tick, that means that it's enabled and it's fully available for junior admin. If you see a padlock, that means the read only. And if you see a disable, obviously the junior admin will not be able to see that. So, for example, let's just say that the junior admin can see the dashboard, cannot see the ACC, can see the monitor. That's fine with the monitoring. Um, again, the the policies, he can view them. He can't he can't uh, and change them. So it's just read only. So I put the padlock for them and um, for everything. Rule hit count. Just he can't see it. Objects, for example, he can read them. He can read them. If you click them twice, that means it's it's going to go to disable it. So read only for the object as well. Okay. Network. Now you can't see it. Devices. He's not going to be able to see it. Uh, privacy, validate of everything, I'll just deny everything, disabled. For the network, for example, let's just say that we want to see the network, but we only want to give the interfaces and zones, and that's just read only. The rest is, is denied. So the user, the junior, whoever I put in that group, they're not going to be able to see any of these. They will be able to see the interfaces and zones, but that's about it, really. And that's just read only anyway. Okay, now we have configured that and uh, we make sure the API is not, nothing is enabled and the command line is not enabled. So you can have as a super user, super user reader, device admin, device admin reader, but no, we don't want to give the command line to junior admin. So click OK. Now we have created that profile. Now I can go and create my administrator. For example, administrator, I'm going to add, um, say, Astrid. Junior. And uh, for authentication profile, we have not configured anything. And uh, for example, for password, it's going to Palo Alto. 
Now let me just put the, the name just without junior. Easy to sign in. Then what administrator type can be dynamic. It's already configured here, like super user and so on. Super user read only, device administrator or device administrator read, read only. Or we can create a role based is the one that we just created. For example, junior admin. And click OK. Now we've got an administrator. We've configured the admin role. Everything is done, so we're just going to click Commit for that to take effect. And then we're going to go and test it. OK, the commit is done. Result is successful. So I'll close that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open um, Chrome browser in incognito and go to the same address and try login with my um, with Astrid. OK, so the username is Astrid. And password is just Palo Alto. OK. Now, Astrid is logged in, well, me. <laughs> um, you can see that from here. That's my the name who's logged in. Uh, I can log out and last time since logged in. And I can see not all the functional tabs I can see in here. I can see the dashboard, dashboard. I can see the monitor. OK, that's great. I can see the policies, but everything on the policies was read only. So I can't change anything, right? Um, there's not anything in that anyway. But I can't really add. You can see it's grayed out. I can't add it. I can't delete it. I can't override these ones. Same with objects. Object, I can only see them, but I can't change them. And then the next thing, we're going to see the network. And for network, we only left the interfaces and zones, and we took everything else off. Right. We can't, we can't really do anything. We can't just change it, anything. Because it says it's read-only. Only. OK, so that proves that we created an account junior account he can see some stuff and he can't he can just view in really he can't really change anything right so the next thing is we're going to actually test this account using a um, command line interface so this is to ob we observed it using a web user interface now through the command line interface now for command line interface I'm going to open a putty so open putty and then I'm going to access my firewall management. If I load that, you can see it's very basic, yeah. So the IP address of the of the my firewall, port number 22, and I'm accessing through SSH, yeah. So open. And the first thing is, I was going to test this and I cancelled it right away. I didn't want to, actually, I wanted to show you this, yeah? So if, because I'm opening through PuTTY and PuTTY is exchanging the certificate and the certificate or the key is not guaranteed because it's self-signed key from Firewall. So it just says, are you sure you want to connect to this or hit cancel to abandon this connection? But I'm sure I'm okay with it. So I'm just going to click yes. First, we're going to log in as administrator and see that we can log in. And then I'm going to try and log in as a as a asterisk and see that you can't log in. So admin and then admin. And you can see now I'm I'm logged in as administrator. It's all fine. I can configure and exit from that. Right. The next thing I'm going to try and log on through uh, as ad, as Astrid. So click Putty. And same, firewall management. Load that so you can see it. Click open. And this time I'm going to use Astrid. Okay. And the password was Palo Alto. But you can see right away it closes. It's not giving us access to that. It's because we are not you are not allowed to log in through the command line interface. Okay, so now I'm gonna log in again as a Astrid on the incognito, and um, and then we're gonna test the commit lock. So Astrid, and the password is Palo Alto. 
Now we're going to check that, for example, pretend that this administrator is going to need, is going to create a configuration, even though he's not allowed to configure anything. But I imagine that he's allowed to configure and he's going to take the commit log because not two administrator, they can't, um, but they, you don't want them to configure at the same time configuration. Maybe you just want to commit from this administrator. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to close this banner. Okay. Now you see there the commit lock, the, the padlock. If the administrator doesn't want to, he wants to only configure itself and not interfere with any other administrator, he can take the padlock. So if I click on that, that's going to open the lock. And here we can take lock. Um, we can have either commit lock or we can have a config lock. So I'm going to take a commit lock, even though I'm not allowed to commit anything, but I can still take the lock. So Astrid. Um, okay, click OK and close it. Now, if I go to, as a, for example, access as my main administrator and I'll try and do something, right? So I'm trying to try and create, um, say, um, account. Um, and as a super user, click OK and I want to go and commit it, it will say, yep, committed, and it will say error. Other administrators are holding the lock or device-wide commit lock, so we can't commit it. And as you can see here, we have a padlock that is closed. That means that some administrator has taken the padlock. We can have a look at it, and if we have a privileges, we can remove that. So click on that. And you can say that we have an Astrid. Astrid has taken the commit lock, and you can see the comment I did write and the date. So I can remove the lock if I have privilege. Uh, if I have the privileges, I can just say remove the lock. Are you sure? Yes. And that's it. You can see the padlock is gone. I can take my own lock and write it. But now I have created that user. I can commit it. Fine, because I've taken the lock off. The next thing is that we're going to check the DNS servers for the firewall, making sure that DNS is configured correctly. Okay, once this is finished, now it has taken effect, and you can see the commit has been uh, grayed out. To make sure the DNS servers are correctly configured, we go to Device, Setup, and then Services. And in the services, we can see the DNS servers primary and secondary. If we want to change it, for example, we can click on this gear icon here. We can edit it, change the numbers, whatever you want. We can put the proxy service if you want. It's the same place we can change the NTP for network time protocol and uh, update service. So for example, let's say that we are in, e because we are in EU, so we take eu.updates.paloaltonetworks.com. These are the, the path for EU and we can commit that. And after this commit has finished, we're gonna go and schedule dynamic updates. We have already authorized our machine. We have registered, authorized it. We have subscriptions with the Palo Alto, like the antivirus, wildfire, and so on. So, okay, that's done. So now if I go to same place devices, Go further down, we have a dynamic updates. In the dynamic updates, you can see that we have an antivirus that hasn't been scheduled. So maybe this one, I need to schedule it for, to download um, daily or hourly. And um, you can put the hours there, say daily, for example. And we want to download at 1 a.m. And action, we can say, for example, none, do nothing, just check. A download only and download and install. So for example, download and install, okay. So that's gonna be run at 1 a.m. today, or every day. <laughs> and uh, further down, we have application and threats. See, this is already downloaded. And um, for this, we have download only. We can change it. So if we click on that, we can change to download and install. But the reason why we want the application and threats to be downloaded only, because we want to review the policies if it's gonna affect or interfere or create some kind of problem with our policies. Same thing we can do for wildfire, say that for this, we want to download it every minute, right? In action, 
we want to download and install. Wildfire is going to update any malicious software, any malware that that's any customer found out around the world in the Palo Alto networks. Palo Alto networks, they're going to make that available for their customers. Okay, this um, we've done all the steps here that we had the, in this initial configuration lab. Thank you for watching lesson 2.7, lab initial configuration of chapter 2, initial device configuration. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Bye-bye.